Namaste. So, beginning the second Adhyaya of the Katha Upanishad, Death has accepted Nachiketa as a student after testing him to see whether he still has material desires or if he is actually fit to receive the absolute knowledge. So, he has passed death's test, and now death is going to explain how and why he accepts him as a student. Anya Shreyo Nya Dutaiva Preyaste Umbhe Nanarte Purusham Sinitaha Tayo Shreya Adanasya Sadhu Bhavati Hiyatir Daya Ukreyo Vrinite The preferable is different indeed. And so, indeed, is the pleasurable different. These two, serving divergent purposes, bind men. Good befalls him who among these two accepts the preferable. He who selects the pleasurable falls from the true end. And Shankaracharya explains in his Tika, all men are impelled by these two under an idea of personal duty, for according as one hankers after prosperity or immortality, one engages in the pleasurable or the preferable. Therefore, all men are said to be bound by these two through their sense of duty with regard to what leads to the pleasurable or the preferable. These two though related severally to the two human goals, are opposed to each other, inasmuch as they are of the nature of knowledge and ignorance. Thus, since these cannot be performed together by the same person, without discarding either of the two, therefore one has to accept either the pleasurable or the preferable. Of course, the preferable is knowledge leading to liberation, self-realization. And the pleasurable is material wealth and so on. Now, we went over this at the end of the previous chapter in the recent video, that death tempted Nachiketa with all kinds of sensual delights. Women, wealth, land, power, long life, sons and grandsons, and so on and so forth. Nachiketa just said, no, no, thank you. You can keep all of that. <laughs> I want to know the truth. What is the secret of death? What is beyond death? Is it annihilation? Or is it the key to eternal life? So, Death was very pleased with Nachiketa. In fact, he awarded him an extra boon because he was so pleased with Nachiketa's understanding of his teaching about the uh, Nachiketa fire. So because Nachiketa understood everything so well, he got a chance for this third boon which is, of course, the ultimate boon, and is what the rest of the Upanishad is about. So, let's move on to the next verse. Shreyascha preyascha manusya meta Tau sang paritya vivinakti dhiraha Shreyo hi dhiro bhipraya suvranite Reyo mando yoga The preferable and the pleasurable approach mankind. The man of intelligence, having considered them, separates the two. The intelligent one selects the electable in preference to the delectable. The unintelligent one selects the delectable for the sake of growth and protection. So the unintelligent person is under the impression that I am this body. 
This body is myself. This world is real. My bodily family relations are actually my kin. And my work, my possessions, my experiences in this world are all real and tangible things. But as we discussed last time, because all these are temporary, they are actually unreal. That which has a beginning and an end is only a cause of suffering. For example, the material body goes through six changes. Gestation, birth, growth, maturity, waning or disintegration, and finally death. These six changes are true for every material object. It doesn't matter, animate or inanimate. They all have a cause, a beginning, a middle, and an end. So, given that time expands unlimitedly in both past and future, actually the existence of things is almost like non-existence because they exist for such a short time. The material body is at most a hundred years. Uh, I mean, there's a few people who live beyond that, but in this world, who would want to be over a hundred years old? It must be horrible. So, people cling to this life, but what are they clinging to? Something that is ultimately going to be finished. When that happens, we suffer. According to the degree of our attachment, that will be the degree of our suffering when the life is over. And because, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, yang yang vapi smaran bhavam, whatever you remember or think of at the time of death, tang tang evaiti shankara. This becomes your body in the next life. So the state of being that you attain in the next life is proportionate to the degree of self-realization that you realize at the time of death. Now, we've made this point a number of times that Nachiketa approached death voluntarily. And thus, death treated him as a guest. Now, most people don't approach death voluntarily. They're kicking and screaming and being dragged by death's power, by the Yamadutas. So, they are not treated as guests, they're treated as prisoners. You see the difference? And since death is inevitable, one should choose to be treated as a guest, not as a criminal. You see? To cling to this body, to cling to life, to think that this body is me and all these things in relation to it are mine, this is what leads to suffering. This is called the pleasurable. Most people choose the pleasurable because they're ignorant. They don't realize this is going to cause them suffering in the future. They're only thinking, oh, this is going to give me pleasure now. But that pleasure is very short-lived. Life is short. And at the end of life, death is inevitable. So, in other words... The shreyas, the preferable, being knowledge or self-realization, is the path less taken, the road less traveled, the choice uh, very few people make. And the pleasurable, the preyas, or it's also called the pravriti marg, uh, poverty, from which our English word poverty comes, means to choose to get pleasure now from temporary things that ultimately cause suffering. This is a poverty of the soul. The real riches, as Jesus said so eloquently, are those 
where moth and rust do not corrupt. Huh? Unfortunately, I mean, Jesus had so many beautiful teachings, but they were corrupted by the Roman uh, church when it became a political arm of the Roman Empire. So we don't really know Jesus' complete teaching. But that, and when he says, uh, there's no way for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. These are pointing at this path. So fortunately, the complete teaching, the complete knowledge is there in the Vedic literatures, especially the Upanishads. The Upanishads give the meaning of the Vedas. Each Veda has a, a Veda, a Brahmana, and an Upanishad part. The Veda gives the mantras for the rituals. The Brahmana section gives the instructions for the priests. And the Upanishad gives the meaning. So the meaning in this case, that Nachiketa fire, is that intelligence which separates the distinction between the pleasurable and the preferable and chooses the preferable, chooses self-realization, chooses enlightenment and liberation over simply a mundane temporary enjoyment because that has a beginning and an end, whereas self-realization is eternal. Once you reach self-realization, you realize, oh, this has always been this way. This is always the way it is for everybody. Well, why don't people realize it? Because they're distracted by the pleasurable. They fill their life up with all kinds of nonsense things that ultimately only take their energy and time and waste their lives going round and around the rat race, the routine, huh? the daily struggle to get to work and do this and do that and maintain their home and family and all this stuff. Huh? What a waste of life. The opportunity of a human life is that we have intelligence. Unlike the animals, we have the intelligence to make this distinction between ordinary material things and spiritual things. And this is, of course, the purpose of religion. But unfortunately, religion has become more like a business or, or more like politics in Kali Yuga. And so we have a problem recognizing the real choice, recognizing that it's possible to detach from these material things and attain actual enlightenment by means of self-realization. So the rest of the Upanishad, the next five chapters, is going to describe this process of self-realization from the beginning to the end. And if you follow very carefully and understand all these verses and their instructions as they're given, in the order they're given, you will find that it forms a perfect path to complete enlightenment, which is called Adhyatma Yoga. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namas Shivaya. <laughs>